Hi, my name is John Kim. I'm a licensed therapist and life coach, and I'm putting self-betterment into a shot glass. In today's episode, how to get through a breakup. Sweet. Okay, step one is the reframe. You are not going through a breakup. You're going through an expired relationship. Yes, your relationship has expired like milk, and I know that sounds cold, but listen, it's a mindset, it's a choice, and it's going to allow you to let go. So, your relationship wasn't meant to last a day longer or a day shorter. It expired when it was meant to expire. So it's ran its course, right? The relationship has come to an end, not so much because of you or him or her, but because it ran its course. Step two, cut the cord. I know that sometimes you go through an expired relationship and you still want to be friends or you think you could handle following them on social media. It's not good for you if you have decided that the relationship is no longer. And, and listen, anything could happen. And yes, you guys could have around two or whatever. But for now, if you really believe that uh, the relationship is over, then you have to cut the cord. And cutting the cord means no more following them on social media. It's going to lead to a lot of sleepless nights and whenever you see them doing things posting things it's going to be very triggering it's going to bring up things uh you are going to uh, jump into your time machine and go backwards you're going to start replaying shit uh, it might make you angry there's a lot of things it's going to throw you into a very slippery well so you have to cut the cord if you're going through an expired relationship you have to disconnect from social media you have to unfollow the person and they will understand and if they don't too bad it's the only way that you are going to move forward if you don't they're going to be like shackles on your foot where it's going to pull you back step three take ownership now listen there's going to be some time before you get here maybe two weeks or maybe two months i don't know but there's going to be a lot of feelings depending on how the relationship ended you know if someone did something wrong if there was infidelity there might be a lot of anger and resentment you have to work through those feelings and allow those feelings to subside before you can look back right before you go back into the black box and review objectively and start taking ownership of your peace now here's the thing Every expired relationship, I believe, is some of the creates some of the most richest soil for growth, right? So if you decide to take ownership, and this is the piece that's, a, if that's really valuable for you to actually grow from this and become a better version of yourself, without this piece, you're just going to create anger, resentment, and your fear to get into another relationship is going to increase, right? So an expired relationship can be a blessing or a curse. And you decide, and it comes down to this, when you are ready, you have to take ownership. Now, don't review the relationship and, and, and point out all the things that he or she did wrong, okay? Taking ownership means review the relationship and own how you contributed to the expiration, right? And listen, you, no matter how bad your partner was, you are also 50% of this. So even if you feel that you've done nothing wrong, uh, maybe as a way of thinking, maybe you should have said something, maybe you didn't draw boundaries, maybe you didn't express yourself, maybe you didn't allow yourself to be heard. I don't know, but taking ownership means looking back at the relationship and owning your contribution to the expiration. Now, here's the other step. See if that's a pattern. Is that something that you continually have done in other relationships? And if it is a pattern, you have to break that pattern or you're going to go into the next relationship um, and create that same pattern, which creates a ceiling for your growth. And you'll just be um, going from one lily pad to another lily pad in the same relationship, just different faces, okay? So it's really important to take ownership of your contribution to the expiration. This is going to be the program or the prescription for you to move forward. Uh, you need to know what you need to work on, and this is how you will know that. Step five, focus on you. Now listen, a lot of people, when they go through an expired relationship, they start focusing on finding their next one, right? They get on dating apps, uh, they're swiping, they're going on dates, and they're doing this because, uh, partly because they don't want to be alone. And if you are someone who needs to not be alone, then you need to be alone. Does that make sense? Yeah. So focus on you. What does that look like? It means to do things, right, that connects you with yourself. Because a lot of times we lose ourselves in relationships. I talk a lot about being in lost instead of in love. 
And as you review what happened, you will start to get a sense of, of, uh, of the disconnect that you had with yourself because of the relationship. So focusing on yourself means to reconnect with you, right? Whatever that looks like. So it could be, um, I don't know, um, fitness, it could be activities, it could be things, doing things that you're passionate about, it could be taking classes, um, pursuing an art, uh, starting a business, whatever it is, connect to what lights you up, what makes you whole, what makes you a, a complete person. And here's why this is really important. If you can't do it for you, then do it for who you're going to be with next because you connecting to yourself is, means that when you find someone who deserves you, and yes, I said deserves you, you are going to be a better version of you. So you're bringing more to the table, right? You are actually becoming more attractive by doing this step, which is focusing on you. Uh, people who skip this, people who go from one expired relationship and get into another one very fast, they are not evolving and expanding and becoming better people through relationships. Instead, they're just numbing themselves. So as you start to focus on yourself, right, as you start to connect or reconnect with yourself, parts of yourself that you have disconnected with because of this relationship, you are also going to create new non-negotiables. Most likely, you have negotiated a lot in this relationship, including yourself. Relationships are about compromise, but they're not about compromising self. And I talk a lot about being in loss instead of in love. And that's what happens is when we fall into relationships, we end up getting in lost, meaning we lose ourselves in the other person instead of falling in love. So what are your new non-negotiables? As you go through your journey, you're going to start coming up with some things that you are no longer willing to negotiate. I'll give you a few that should definitely be on the top of your list. Character assassination, abuse, right? But you could also, you know, create some non-negotiables that are um, very specific to you. Maybe you, maybe, maybe in a relationship, uh, there was no banter. And now a non-negotiable is that you want really good banter or maybe humor or whatever. But know that the, there's a difference between a non-negotiable and a preference, right? We're not talking about preferences because that's going to make you very narrow. We want you to grow and we want you to be wide. And to do that, you want to create non-negotiables. Uh, and, and these non-negotiables are going to be the framework. It's, you're going to create a strainer that you pour people in as you meet new people later on not right now as you do that the people that fall through your strainer let them go down the river and the people that stay in your strainer they're going to be the nuggets of gold that you are going to choose to date but holding on to non-negotiables will protect you and build you a space so you don't have a similar experience than before okay last note don't judge yourself on how long each stage is going to take you know, people ask me, you know, I should be over someone by now. And I hate that term being over someone. I think it devalues the experience. And I understand that some relationships can be a really bad experience or toxic or crazy or whatever, dysfunctional. But in that dysfunction, you're going to learn and grow and expand through that. You're going to turn that experience into growth, right? You're going to turn your break up into a breakthrough. So don't judge yourself on how long it should take or supposed to take to get quote unquote over someone. It's different for every experience. So these are these stages are going to be kind of the roadmap. You may spend, you know, six months to a year on one stage, you know, and also focusing on yourself, although it is a stage, it's something that you like pedaling a bike, you always do because once you stop pedaling, the bike's gonna stop. So if you are interested in always evolving and becoming better a version of yourself in the relationship, when you find your next relationship, you should always focus on you. Of course, you're also focusing on the relationship and, and, and the other person, but you can't stop pedaling that bike or you will lose your stance and your sense of self and repeat old patterns.